welcome to the English with Kirsty podcast from www.englishwithkirsty.com. Here I'll be sharing with you tips, information and other learning resources so that you can improve your business English. Welcome to episode 190 of the English with Kirsty podcast. Today I have another guest on the podcast. Um, I had a conversation with Nick, which I'm actually not going to give a very long introduction for because this particular episode ended up being a bit longer than, than we usually make um, because we had a plan about what we talk about, some subjects like working in international environments and moving abroad to study and language learning in general, but we got into all kinds of other interesting topics as well and when it came to editing I didn't want to, to remove any of it so I'm gonna leave that there because I had a, a good time and I think there are some interesting tips and, and points that you would probably also enjoy so um, I'm gonna put the I've mentioned some links in the interview so I'm going to put those in the show notes page so Nick's LinkedIn link and we also mentioned the Mindset Owners Club for experienced business owners and all the information about that will also be linked from this episode's page which is englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast slash episode 190. I hope you enjoy it. Okay so thank you for joining us today on the English with Kirsty podcast. Perhaps you can start by just telling us something about who you are and what you do. Hey Kirsty, thanks a lot for having me. My name is Nick. I am an engineer. I live in Dublin. I have my own business as well. I have my own startup and also I'm the director for Mindset Owners Club, which is a business uh, owners club dedicated to experienced business owners and uh, creating leads and becoming more close to each other. Yeah, I'll put the link for, for the club on your show notes page as well so that people can find out more about that if they, if they want yeah. to have a look at the website. Um, so languages, I understand you speak four languages. Um, first of all, which, which ones are they? So my, my mother tongue, if I may use this expression, is Romanian. I also speak French, I speak English and Italian, which, to be honest, is not a high quality considering R Romanian and Italian are pretty close. So. Yes. So it's still quite impressive for um so why why did you start to become interested in learning languages how did that all come about were you very young oh well i don't know if i was interested i just you know i think i had the skills for it i was good at it so if you're good at something you just do it and then back in the day um, there were no sub subtitles in uh, in romania to english movies or french movies or whatever cartoons so basically you just were you were watching some show in in english or in french so you with time you get used to it and you you learn the language just by default i think um, with france for example it helped a lot because i also studied in school i started french when i was eight had good teachers as well uh, mm -hmm. english i started when i was around 13 uh, not the best teachers in the world, I may say, especially for the first two years, it was a geography teacher that was teaching English in my school. Uh, in high school, yes, I got this um, uh, very experienced English teacher who studied a lot in the UK and uh, helped me a lot with understanding, you know, the accent. Also, she kind of explained the culture how should things should be seen, you know, read and comprehension, you know, from the most basic to most advanced. So a lot of your learning was done at school. So you, you started with, um, in terms of additional languages, you started with French and then English came later? Yes, yes, French and Italian. And then uh, the last one was English, it's true. And um, besides my teacher from high school who, like I told you, was very British-focused. Uh, a lot of the shows and movies on TV were American accent, you know, so I got used to both. 
And if you want to understand something, you will, and you don't have the option. I mean, I, I know a lot of people enjoy using subtitles. I don't and can't, but if you don't have that option, then, you know, you have to find something to make it work. If you want to access that information, you you work at it until you until you do understand. Yes, uh, to be honest, it, I would recommend to see a movie, for example, without subtitles. I would recommend to see it without it because you'll understand it better. You know, when you translate from English to French or from French to Romanian, um, it's pretty hard to translate some consecrated uh, ex expressions. Yeah, there are lots of English teachers who would disagree with you, but I'm not one of them. I think I think that's that's good advice that people should do that more um, because then it really improves their listening skills as well and not just their reading skills. Because ultimately reading can be easier, especially at the beginning. But, you know, if you want to develop all of your skills at the same time, listening, speaking, reading, writing, then you need to put time into developing all of them, particularly ones that you find harder. Oh, yes. And... Uh... Regarding writing, for example, today you have uh, all these autocorrect functions and it's pretty easy. But back in my day, when I used the pen and paper, you didn't have that. So, um, well, you had to learn how to write as well. And uh, I often use a book called a dictionary. <laughs> if you mm. see the irony in that, you know, and you just look, okay. So plural, and especially for French, so it was like you have you have, you have gender, you have uh, plural. So there are all kinds of variation of verbs and substance uh, and, and common uh, words. So basically, you take the book, you take the dictionary, and you start looking for them. And uh, you still, I still had writing mistakes at the end, you know, orthography and. A lot of mistakes like that but i guess this is a better way to learn yeah i think people can be very quick to rely on something like a, a translation you know like a translation website and it's okay for the odd word or so but i i use a lot of online dictionaries as well because i think people trying to become fluent by looking at translations that are automatic and may be wrong that's that's not the way to learn if you build a sentence yourself you understand more about you know how the elements of the sentence came together and um and if you understand the rules then that that helps you to, to build best sentences yourself anyway so um I, I guess it's easier for people that like to understand how things work because then you will put that time into to learning about each new language and, and how the grammar works yeah. or you know how how the sentences should be put together but if you do that it can help you to avoid a lot of mistakes later on well that's that's how i did it you know uh, my children, for example, they're not doing it this way. You know, my children, just uh, especially my eldest one, just speaks two languages in, since he was six. You know, and uh, he understands accents in all of those languages. Well, actually, if I put Irish, that's three languages he speaks. But I don't know if he speaks a correct Irish. To be honest, I don't speak Irish. But he's very skilled. He speaks uh, a perfect Romanian. A, I think a perfect English, he can bend accents, he can make it sound American, he can make it sound Irish, he can make it sound British. So I think this is a skill, you know, although I need to, uh, I must say, I never, I never insisted on speaking a foreign, lang foreign language to him. I always speak Romanian to him. I tried at once to speak French when he was a baby. He didn't like me. He used to say to me, stop that. So uh, even a friend of ours of the family, which is some kind of an expert, told me once, no, speak with your child in your own language. And he speaks English in school and while playing with his friends. And even uh, my other children, when they, when they play between them, they speak English. When they talk to me, they speak Romanian. So that comes natural for them. So you didn't, um, you didn't like tell them that they had to to learn one or two or, or more languages. No, you, no, um, no. I just let them be. I let them be. I knew the environment will shape them up. And do you have? Because I've seen people do it in 
in lots of different ways. Do you have like a, a rule for inside the home and outside the home? Or is it the rule is speaking with you? Or, you know, how do they know which language you want them to speak at any uh, time? Usually they, uh, when we are outside and, for example, if there are other people that should understand our conversation, we use English because we think it's a matter of being polite, you know, not, but by default, they reply to me. They always respond and reply to me in Romanian. You know, uh, although I met, may add the small, the younger ones in a very dirty Romanian, if I can use this phrase, they, they don't really, um, I mean, they don't have a vocabulary like the eldest one. They don't have, you know, and they're not interested because my eldest one always asks me, how do you say tulip in Romanian? Or how do you say that? How do you say that? And I only tell him once. And he remembers it like for forever. You know, while the youngest one, they never, they, they never ask. They just use the English term. You know? Yeah, I think it's, it's some people really, really like languages. Others, exactly. not so much. <laughs> Exactly. I accept them just the way they are, you know. Yeah. So basically, I try to be as natural as I can be. I speak to them in my own language. They understand the way they reply. It's their own business, you know, but they they understand me well. And that that's good. Uh, funny, the funny expression come when they mix the two languages. You know. Because it happens, they mix, they mix two languages and, and the message that comes out, only I can, can tell what they mean. Because you know both of them, but yeah. I think it's the vocabulary that you learn as well if, you, if you're talking about something specific, like, um, I can't think of a good example now, but some of the, um, if, if I've been talking to or reading about something in, in German, it's quite involved. And then I go to tell my partner about it in English. And then I think, what is, what is the English word for that? I understood it in German, but then, you know, like sometimes you, you um, use one language for a specific topic and then you have to think a bit harder when you want to tell somebody about that in a different language. Yes. Well, once when we were um, with another family, which also is, is just like us in the same situation, the kids, you know, the parents are Romanian, the kids uh, also speak uh, English and, uh, and Romanian. And their child, they have this boy who's friend with my eldest, and they, um, they mix the languages back then. And something funny happened because we were on the street and, you know, taking selfies and taking photos. And uh, in Romanian, to take a photo, you say, fuck a pose. And that, that's nothing vulgar that to do. It's the is to say F-A-C. This is how you, you say it, you know. Mm -hmm. And when you mix that and you say, I want to do... So the expression that came out of his mouth was, I want to fuck by myself, which meant I want to do the photo by myself. Mm -hmm. But the people all around were watching like, hey, it's not, you know, was was weird, you know. For us, was not. We understood exactly what he wants. Mm -hmm. he wants to do a, a photo by himself. So it's fine, you know. And uh, yeah, this, this, these things happen, you know, when, when you speak multiple languages, you know. Yeah, you can start to have fun with it, especially if you're in a group of people that also, um, you know, understands both languages, you can be creative as well. Yes, and you know, there are uh, words in, that Romanian use from English, and we kind of gave, gave them a Romanian accent or even the French ones. We just take the word from English and we put it in the Romanian context, you know. And although it is an English word, it sounds very Romanian. <laughs> so um, you were talking about um, your other languages. So you, I understand that you've lived and worked in other countries too. Yes. Um, what are some of the differences that you've discovered as you've been living and working in, in different places? Some of the things you've had to get used to or that, that may have seemed a bit strange at first, but that you know, became normal the more you did them? Well, um, human beings are creatures of habit, I can say that. So when I first uh, left uh, as a student, I went to France and I stayed there for almost four years. 
And in the beginning, it was hard for me to understand uh, the culture. Although the cu European cultures in general are not that far apart, you know, they're, they're pretty close. We're, you know, it's Europe. We kind of know about each other, uh, read some history. So, but still, you know, uh, being forced because this is how I saw it, you know, being forced every day from, from the dusk to dawn, you know, to, to speak French was, was a big problem for me, just like Maybe. it was when I came to Ireland, because I used to, uh, okay, watch TV, listen, that's fine, but, or have an English class or talk to somebody in English, but that will last like a couple of hours a day. The rest of the day was Romanian. And now I found myself in, in, in France. And if I wanted anything, anything at all, I needed to speak French, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember being tired a lot, you know, had headaches, um, dreaming about it. Um, dreaming of the language is when yes, you realize, yeah, you see, yes. <laughs> it's in your brain now. And um, you get used to it, but you need to have patience. You get used to it within one or two years. You need to uh, have an open mind and actually force yourself. I mean, you are aware that that word or that phrase that you're getting out of your mouth is grammatically incorrect, but you need to put it up there. And if somebody corrects you, you say, thank you, you know, try to pay attention. And this is how you get better. You know, you need to use those words and uh, an environment with locals helps helps a lot. You improve a lot. Um, watching TV helps. Everything helps. But you need to be patient, like I said, because for the first year, even first two years, it was a problem. Uh, writing articles, uh, especially during the PhD, going to conferences in French and some people, you know, like you find everywhere, they speak faster than others. They, they don't open their mouth 100%. So the words that come out, they, they're a little, you know, hard to understand. And then you feel obligated to say, excuse me, can you please repeat that? I didn't quite understand that, you know. So... Yes, you need to have patience. And with time, you, you become better. And the same thing happened to me when I came to Ireland. Although English, uh, I consider it easier than French because French has so many exceptions, so many uh, accents, so many r rules. Oh, when you are in that situation and you use the past tense, you need to put this termination, you know, and you need to do this. While English, you, I, I found it, for me, for me, that's my particular case, easier. But still, for the first year, was the same, you know, headaches, uh, a lot of, you know, sleep, to dreaming. But once you get used to it, it's, it's just business as usual. A lot that of determination is. as well. I think that's what people, some people don't realize, particularly, you know, monolingual people, how much effort other people use when we're working in like a business environment or study environment in in another language it, it takes a lot of determination a lot of effort a lot of discipline and even of the work. logic is different i don't know sometimes I, i'm thinking and i don't think this is correct i'm not sure but with an idea i was thinking like even the logic you know when you have a different background i think the logic is dictated by that background you know the logic that you have although I've seen a lot of engineers, you know, uh, and theoretically the logic should be the same in some cases is not, you know, because this diversity that is today from an engineering point of view, it's a blessing because you have so many, so many possibilities. One, one of them, uh, or some of them see, see it one way, the other ones, depending on the background, you know, see it differently. So I think even, even the logic that's in your brain is related to the language. So the more languages you speak, the more you understand the logic behind that language, you know, your, your brain evolves. 
and um, that's a that's good because you become uh, you're more open minded you know with age i see it myself in my 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 experience with age you tend to to renounce to get out of your comfort zone you know and if you do that you will find yourself you know um, closer and your your mind will be closed and you don't accept the new anymore but if you mm-hmm. if you change your environment if you go if you change your language if, you don't have this you know because you you are forced to get out of that comfort zone you are forced to express yourself you are forced to so you become more open minded and you learn more now i don't know for how long this is going to go but you're definitely much more tolerant if i may say you accept things just the way they are you don't you don't feel the need to revolt anymore you know like oh that's not fair that's uh, you become you just see, you've seen so many things you've seen different cultures and yeah that's that's natural and you move on you know well, sometimes the new perspective is better or you know you can see it's it's easier it's it's less stressful it's um i don't know i think that's the really good thing about international teams sometimes people can look at things in a way that you never would have and then that that helps you to develop as well yes yes because you learn from the others that's another another thing you know uh, and this skill i mean you can learn from a book you can learn from a uh, from school right you can but interacting with different people develops this uh, uh, skill learning from the others you know you see how the others are doing it and i could say at this moment this is one of my strongest skills if you show me something you know then i will be able to reproduce it you know i, I look at what you are doing you know if you show me look this is how we do this or this is how you do that you know i can observe it and learn it learn it very fast you know if you give me an example so yeah that the, will have helped with your language learning as well because if you have that ability then um, possibly yes possibly um, no. but then it's retaining it as well isn't it because um certainly thinking with studying i used to well i still do have a really good photographic memory or you know i get very good short-term memory but if you ask me the same thing a week later i now it's harder to do that when i was a lot younger i could but now i have to put more um Effort. time and effort into retaining yeah. information exactly the same for me you know when i read something i think i'm just getting old you know <laughs> you know I, i'm just getting old i'm i had to read it i have to read it twice or three times you know but maybe it's also a, a matter of um, selection you know maybe it's not a matter of getting old maybe it's a matter of selection maybe your brain just doesn't consider that important without mm-hmm. you knowing it you know you don't have i mean you want to be impo- you wanted that thing to be important that you read but maybe your your brain just rejects it for i don't know what reason and also there's so much more going on in terms of you know if you're studying you're only studying a lot of the time but when you're when you're running a business and and studying and learning another language and i don't know you you have your family to look after there are just so many other demands on your brain than maybe there were when you were 12 years old or something like that Yes, that's another thing because um, I am the kind of person when I when I am doing something, I like to be focused a hundred percent on on that. Um, as far as I know, the human brain is not capable to multitask. Uh, it's capable to focus on something. It can do something else in the same time only if that second activity is by reflex. Mm-hmm. You know, something like I don't know, washing a window. If you wash three thousand windows so far, you can do it while focusing on something else. You know, um, but I do have a problem when I get interrupted. That's true, and uh, it takes me a while. You know, to it's like waking waking up from a dream. If I'm focusing on something, and you come and say, "Hey, Nick, uh, what about that?" I kind of look at you like for. A few good seconds and say, "Could you please repeat?" You know. So yes, I, I have this, but maybe that's 
also an advantage because this is how you learn better you know being you become trapped into your own universe there and you focus 100 percent on what you're doing yeah, hyper focus is good if I mean, not everyone has it but if you do then it does mean that you can be you can apply yourself to the task and, and make sure that that is finished before the next thing starts so yeah, yeah but on on the other side you cannot do you know like i said there's family there's a business there are um it's very hard to plan the day you know i prefer to focus like okay there's this business that i need to do so i will focus it today on this but if i need to have like if i have 10 tasks today to do you know okay i need to leave i try to cut as much as possible you know to get the list down to three because i will get them wrong if i have too many of them it's mm -hmm. not because uh, i don't know i'm incompetent it's just because i i need to focus on that thing and if i i am aware that i have 10 tasks i will not focus 100 percent you know so yes i have this um, not sure if it's a skill you know it's useful like i said when you have uh, less tasks but when you have more and you need to, uh, to work on multiple fronts it becomes a problem hmm. yeah i can relate to that <laughs> so thinking about all the experiences that you've had then um in terms of working across um multi like international teams what what are some things that you think people in the uk and ireland should be aware of um when working with partners in other parts of mainland Europe where you've lived or where, where you have more experience, what, what do we need to think about so as not to make mistakes or to, to come across in a, in a negative way? I don't think you can make mistakes, to be honest, in, in, um, when it comes to cultural differences. Because what I noticed is that business owners usually are open-minded. So they are also tolerant. This is what I noticed. Uh, I'm sure there are exceptions, but the ones I interacted with usually are very open-minded. And how should I put this? Uh, they are willing to accept your cultural background. They are quite interested in your cultural background. You know, they're curious about it. So making mistakes... No, I don't think so. You know, uh, when you want to do a business, I mean, usually if I want to do a business with you, it's a mutual interest. Business you know? to business, yes. Business to customer, maybe not so much, but I guess a lot of the... the um... Business to customer, usually you hire somebody local. Like uh, every big multinational that wants to, I don't know, expand in Romania, they will have a local office which will help with this business to customer you know yeah if you don't have the skills to do it yourself then yes that that's the way the multinationals are doing it you know you just manage manage it from the distance you hire somebody local and and that's it but uh, irish companies and I, i'm trying to think of one the and i cannot think of any Oh, maybe Ryanair. Yes, Ryanair is an Irish company that works in, Ro in Romania as well, for example, works in Italy, if I'm not mistaken. They hired local. Um, I, I don't think you can, uh, you can do many mistakes unless, and here I cannot have an opinion because I haven't seen it for countries which are have a really different background from the european background right like i don't know china to say i'm sure that there are different ways of dealing with businesses in china than in europe and that i cannot say you know but in europe um like i said we are pretty close culturally one to another we have our differences it's true but we usually understand each other we usually um, Europeans usually speak at least two languages or three. 
Yeah, it's only in the UK that they don't. <laughs> uh, the young people do. Just like in France, you know, there is this uh, concept that the French don't speak foreign languages, but I was a student there and my friends were speaking English or Italian or other type of language. So the young generations today, I think in every country, they grew up with at least an extra two or three languages. For example, in I went to Sweden, Denmark. Germany, everybody speaks English there. Everybody understands. So I think the the young the young generations today um, they they developed a lot this um, learning new language skills, and they want to find out more about the culture about and this European Union cops concept makes it easier. Mm -hmm. yeah. I hope so, because certainly as someone who speaks, well, I have a second language and then another one kind of, I guess, one and a half additional languages and the intention to learn more. Um, it, I think it adds so much value to you, whether you end up doing business in those other languages. I only use one for, for business, my, my German, but the others I don't really feel are, are good enough for that yet, but they are still way to um, create uh, I don't know, uh, to show people that you're interested in them enough to, to learn their language and you can have more interesting conversations. And I think people really respond well if, if they know that you're interested in learning their language. I've had so much help from people that have just, you know, been willing to give their time or corrections or exactly. I think it really helps you to, to get to know people better if you can um, do that using multiple languages. I think also uh, it's a matter of respect. Like if you live in, one, in a certain country and uh, it would be good to learn a little bit about it you know mm. you don't have to be a native right you don't have to uh, speak i don't know read and write and better than shakespeare right you you nobody wants you to do that but i remember when i was in france and in the beginning i had difficulties and everything they were very patient and uh, they will let you finish your sentence wrong or whatever, but they would appreciate your your effort. You know, they would uh, respond differently. And after years, when I got to speak it very well and almost natively, I can say, I remember going back there and uh, in, at the airport, I wanted to buy, uh, I think macarons, you know, those sweets there. French mm -hmm. sweets. Yeah. And uh, in front of me, there was somebody who didn't speak French and didn't even try. And the salesperson was kind of annoyed, you know. And um, when he heard me speaking French, he said, Oh, yeah, I, you, I can understand. I can you. And then I said, Yeah, but he was in front of me. So I translated for him. So they kind of appreciate that thing. Okay, you want to learn, you know, you speak the language. It doesn't really matter if you speak it well. It's a matter of respect. This is how they see it, I think, mm. how people see it. And I also noticed this um, in Italy. You know, if you try to say something, you say, I would like a pizza, you know, so, or something like me want milk or something like they, they really appreciate when they hear you talking, you know, like, oh, yeah, sure, sure, you know, uh, so yeah because so many people don't to start with um don't even even try whether it's because they're going to live somewhere or, or on holiday and i think also we've got this perfectionism as well even those of us who are interested in, in learning languages i i know that those that i don't speak as well i sometimes really struggle and i know that what i say may be wrong so i don't say and that's a really terrible attitude because you're never going to improve and even though I've kind of come through that experience in one language, I start another one and then I, I'm back to the same place thinking, oh, well, if it's not right, I maybe just won't share that idea or I won't say that thing. But that's that's what I tell my my customers not to do all the time. You know, you should you should at least try because what's the worst that can happen? You get it wrong. And maybe somebody will laugh at you. But I think that's only happened to me like two or three times in my whole language yes. learning career. <laughs> well, my wife does it like this. When we were in France, she was always... Oh, I know what I need to say, but it's not correct. And I, I was—I always said to her, "Just say it." 
just say it. It's okay. Nobody expects you to be, I don't know, an academician in the French Academy, you know, of literature. Just say it, you know. And she had the same problem when we came uh, in Ireland. No, yeah, but, but I'm not pronouncing it correctly. I'm not saying I don't. It's okay. Just say it. You know, I remember uh, I said once in French, I didn't know the word land, right? I knew it's in French. And I didn't know it. So I said, uh, ship's, go, uh, ship's son. <laughs> <laughs> they understood. Say, okay, you say land, but they understood the idea, you know, like, I said, I'm looking to eat for some, you know, lamb. And I said, the, the sheep's son, you know. <clears throat> so just say it. You, you will get better, you know, with patience and with time, you will get better. Definitely. Yeah, and that's good advice. I don't always take my own advice, but I am at least trying to more. And it's definitely worth thinking about because, you know, Nobody will know all those things that you wanted to say but didn't. And, you know, you could have helped somebody or you could have, you know, made a really interesting point, but you didn't because you just sat there not saying anything and that, that doesn't help anyone. Okay, so um, where can people find out more about you online? I will put the links on your show notes page, but what's the best way for people to contact you if they, if they well, want to? Well, I have my LinkedIn profile. I, I'm not a big fan of platforms in general so besides linkedin i don't have anything else um, also there is the club website yeah i'll add that link as well um, yes um i'm not a big social media fan i i have linkedin because uh, from my point of view it's a pretty interesting platform and it's different than facebook where I don't know, it's not. Just, I didn't like it from the start, to be honest. I never created an account there. Okay. Uh, I don't have a real explanation for it. You know, like why I don't have Instagram and that. I just don't. I also I'm kind of busy. I'm. I try to do as many things as I can, and I think having uh, social media requires some of your time. I think. Mm. and just not able to spend that time at the moment yeah you only have so much time and you have to decide how it's going to be most effective for you to, to use that and you're right it's just another <laughs> another place for people to contact you if i look at all the places that people can sometimes think oh, I'm, I'm going to miss something because there's, there's so many but yeah it's, it's good to be focused on on say one like like linkedin or you know do do several things well then rather than a lot of things half-heartedly yes you're right and on linkedin i usually respond to messages you know maybe not too fast it depends on you know how busy i am those days you know it depends on the period you know it depends on like for example if i take a few days you know to then i won't won't be checking the account Usually, I, I reply. I don't like uh, people that don't give an answer when you write them. You know, when you try to contact them, you write a message and they never come, come back. So if I don't like that, I don't do it. You know, mm. I try to treat people the way I would like to be treated. So I always reply. Yeah, that's that's good. Well, thank you for your time today. I really enjoyed speaking with you. Um, thank you, Kirsty. And I will um, put all of the the links that we've talked about on on the sure. show notes page so people can come up and find you as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the English with Kirsty podcast. If you have any questions or comments, my email address is kirsty at englishwithkirsty.com or you can go to www.englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast where you'll find information about the individual episodes.